This lesson is the first lesson in oils, the six lessons in oils that were made many years ago. You notice that it's the same lesson as the previous lesson in acrylics. I've left on the introduction, the list of materials and the list of paints and the little thing about mixing your paints because you'll find they're quite interesting. And also the paints are different these days. You can't buy chrome coloured paints. They're quite poisonous, they found out. Well, enjoy the lesson and you will notice that in those days I had a lot of hair. The purpose of this video is to teach a particular method of painting Australian landscapes in oil. The technique I'm about to show you may conflict with traditional methods you may have already learnt. If you have learnt traditional oil painting, I suggest that you follow my instructions entirely and do not try to combine what you have previously learnt with what I'm about to show you. The lesson is designed for beginners and if you follow my instructions step by step, you will learn to paint a beautiful landscape with a reasonable amount of time and effort. We're going to do six paintings in the exercise. The first two paintings are in mono colour. I've selected burnt umber and white. This is for you to learn the brush strokes and arrangement before you move on to colour. Colour is confusing, so we'll practice the brown and white paintings first and then move on to the others. Here is a list of brushes we will be using. The number 12 round brush is used for doing the foliage. The number 8 round brush is used for doing foliage also. The number 8 flat brush is used for doing iron roofs and little sheds. The fan brush is used for painting the grass. The little round brush, number 3 round brush that is, is used for painting the branches. We also use a flat common house painting brush. Select a rather thin brush. This one's about two inches wide. We need a painting knife. I have a cranked painting knife. Select one about this size and a flexible knife. We're using prepared artist canvas. This is canvas which has been primed on one side and prepared ready to accept the oil paint. I suggest you buy this canvas as if you try to paint on inferior material, you will not get the desired effect. We need some masking tape to stick it down and to mark out our painting. Some medium to thin the paint. I'll show you what these plastic bags are for in a moment as we'll mix the colours in them. You may wish to use these prepared artist panels. They're a cardboard with the prepared canvas stuck to them. Here is a list of colours you will need to complete the course. Titanium white, Pathalo blue, Tasman blue, Ultramarine blue, Crimson, Indian yellow, Naples yellow, Chrome green light, Burnt sienna and Burnt umber. The only colour we mix is the purple. The other colours come straight out of the tube. They may need thinning. If they do need thinning, I suggest that you mix them in a little plastic bag. I'm mixing the ultramarine blue and the crimson together. I'm putting more blue than crimson, as the blue is not as strong a colour as the crimson. I'm using a wax medium here. I've just put a, a little dribble in there. Now, the amount of medium you'll put in the paint to thin it varies with the different brands of paint, how old the paint is, and the weather. In hot weather, you'll find you won't have to put as much medium in as in the cold weather. Mix the paint round and round. Tie a knot in the top of the bag. And by doing that, I've got plenty of purple paint ready for when we're doing the coloured paintings. Tear a little hole in the corner of the bag and there's my purple.
I've put all my paint in these plastic bags for convenience. I like you to have a vertical palette. That's that palette up here, and this is where I want you to practice before you put it on the painting. Now that's the titanium white and the burnt umber. I'll start with this painting, I'll rub the sky undercoat in. You'll notice I use my fingers a lot. You may not want to use your fingers, you may want to use a piece of rag to rub the paint in, which is quite efficient. In fact, I think it's a bit faster than using your fingers. Or you might want to use a brush. But I'll use my fingers because it's easier for me to work at the moment. I rub that white right into the canvas. It's most important that you have your undercoat on the sky right into the canvas. And then a bit of burnt umber in each corner. and just blend our sky together like that. Now that's the basic sky. The important thing here is to have the white rubbed right into the canvas, to have the corners slightly darker than the middle of the painting, and keep this white down the bottom. So that's our basic sky. Now for the clouds. I'll take a little bit of burnt umber, round and round and round, and rub it on there. That's the shadow for the clouds, and now the white on the top. I'll finish these clouds off and then I'll show you how to do them. They're quite easy. It's just a matter of practice. Now that'll do for our clouds at the moment. What have I done there? I picked up a little bit of colour, rubbed it on, and picked up a bit of white on the side of my finger and rubbed it round and round. Now that gave me the sunlight shining on the side of the clouds. In all these exercises we're going to have the light shining in this direction. So, if you practice by rubbing a little bit of colour into your practice bit of canvas here, pick up a little bit of white on the side of your finger and rub round and round and round, you'll soon find the motion that produces a cr cloud effect. You'll soon find the motion that produces a cloud effect. It's like rubbing ointment on a bruise. Just the same motion. Now, if you practice this for a while, it's quite fun to practice, just round and round and round, you'll get this cloud effect. And then without a lot of trouble, you can shape your clouds. So there's your first practice piece. Practice those clouds. Most important, keep your sky white down the bottom. Now for the background mountains. We'll put the mountains down here. I'd like you to bring your sky down two thirds of the way down the board. Keeping it white at the bottom, that's most important. And we'll bring our mountains down here somewhere, about there. Keep a pleasant shape on your mountains. This is not pleasant. Now you can put them in with your fingers, or you can put them in with a brush. And keep them pleasant rolling shape. The important thing here with the mountains is the tone. The shape's rather important, as long as it's a pleasant shape, but the tone is most important. If you have them too dark, they come forward too much. So keep them toned down. About the same tone as the middle of the sky. I've got to brush that sky across. If you take your big flat brush and give it one sweep right across, this will give your sky a moving effect. And it covers up a lot of mistakes. Now I just put those mountains wherever I wanted them there. They don't look much like mountains yet, but when I put these foreground, these background trees in, it'll make the mountains stand out a bit more. This is the undercoat for the background trees. This straight down brush stroke is a good brush stroke to give us the background tree effect. And what I'm doing is covering up the bits of mountain I don't particularly like. I don't particularly like any of that mountain actually. I could cover it all over but I won't at this stage. And keep the background trees sweeping in. We keep this sweeping in effect to keep your eye travelling into the picture. It makes an interesting arrangement. A bit more paint there. So that's your sky, your background mountains and the undercoat for your background trees. Now for a bit of foliage on them. Clean my brush. Pick up some white and I'll dab the foliage on. 
Now this is what I call a dab dab brush stroke. I'll show you how to do it in a moment. And most of the foliage in the background and in the foreground is done with this one brush stroke. So if you practice it, you'll find that you'll be able to put the foliage on whenever you want to, wherever you want it. So let's have a bit of practice over here with this brush stroke. There's our undercoat for the trees. Now you pick the paint up by drawing the brush towards you. I need more paint there. You need a lot of paint when you're doing this. Again, I'll show you, we draw the brush towards you. Take it and turn it completely over and dab each little brush stroke on like that. Now, here's the secret. Each time you dab the brush on, it makes a little mushroom shape. So if you can get these mushroom shapes coming off the brush whenever you want to, you can get to shape them into bigger umbrella shapes. And this is the bases of the foliage. I'll pick up two colours now. One on one side and the white on the other. And there's another way of getting a foliage effect. So all the foliage we're going to do is going to be with this dab dab brush stroke. I'm constantly wiping my brush. Pick up the white, bringing the brush towards you, turn the brush completely over and dab it almost perpendicularly onto the board, onto the canvas, and that gives you that little mushroom shape. That's not a good example, I'll try again. There we are. So if you can practice this mushroom shape, coming off the end of your brush, you'll find you'll be able to put it wherever you want it, and then all you have to concentrate on is where to put it, rather than how to put it on. So let's carry on with the picture now. We've got the sun shining in this direction. So we put the foliage on that side of the tree. There we are, the little dab dab brush stroke, round round, little mushroom shapes into bigger umbrella shapes. Over here, although the sun is shining in this direction on the picture, we can put it shining in this direction on this bit just to keep the interest into the picture. We can get away with the sun shining on the wrong side of the trees, but this brings your eye into the picture and it's a, something we want to create is something that people keep looking at. And as long as you can keep their eye travelling in, they'll keep looking at the picture and the picture is a success. I'll quickly finish this foliage over here. Now for the background. We have to put little branches in here later to make them look more like trees. With your background, this is going to be grass here. Try and get this white line effect. You can put it in with your brush, or you can rub it in with your fingers. But if you keep this white line along here, by dragging the paint off the edge of the brush or rolling it off the edge of the brush, it gives you a, a perspective. Makes you look like it's a long way away there. I'm running out of paint again today. More white. Wipe the brush. Now, in the corners, we keep it dark. Like the corner of the sky, we keep the corner of the painting dark. This, again, gives you a perspective and brings your eye into the middle of the picture. That's just a crisscross brush stroke. As you come forward with these brush strokes, you come darker into the corners. Now for the fan brush. Little fan brush is handy to make grass. So we'll just dab it along here. This is a brush stroke you can practice also. It's the same brush stroke right through for grass, but as we come forward, the brush stroke becomes more vibrant because the grass appears to be bigger in front of you. It's quite an easy brush stroke to learn. And if you keep your brush strokes into the picture again, that draws your eye into the picture. Most important. Well, there's our sky and our mountains, background and trees, and the grass done. We have to put these big tree trunks in here. This may not turn out exactly the same as the sample picture I was showing you, and yours may not turn out exactly the same as mine, because it's very flexible. We're making the picture up as we go along. If we don't like a piece of sky, we can put a tree over it. 
if there's a piece that's particularly good, we'll leave that so you can see it. So each picture will be different. I'm going to put a tree trunk in and then I'll show you how I did it. I'll put it over here first. I've loaded the knife with two colours on it. I've got white on one side and the burnt umber on the other side. That's because the sun is shining in this direction and I want to put the tree trunk in about here. So I know how to put it in, I just got to work out exactly where to put it. I'll put it down through there, I don't want to destroy too much of the painting. Now that's like sculpturing. I'll put another one in and then we'll show you how to do it. That's two colours on the knife at once and spread it on like butter. A bit more paint. Now what we do, we pick up one colour on one side of the knife and another colour on the other side of the knife. Now I've laid them out there ready to pick up. Dark on one side and light on the other. The knife must be clean. So because the sun's shining in that direction we've got the light on this side and the dark on the other side. And you can practice this just by putting the colours on and practicing that knife stroke. Try again. Each time you must wipe your knife before you pick up another colour. If you put your knife on and it's dirty, you won't get white, you'll get colour. So you must wipe your knife each time. Pick up the dark on one side, the light on the other, and practice these tree trunks. Just like spreading butter. Now we'll tidy these ones up over here, load the, knife, load the knife again, tidy this one up, a bit of dark around the trunk. Keep your knife strokes down, as the tree is an item that shape, keep your knife strokes that way. It's no good to put paint on in this direction on a thing that's that shape. So a bit of colour down the side here. A bit of dark under the tree makes the tree look like it's going into the ground more. Now for the other trunks over the other side of the picture, making sure I don't cross out anything that I like. There's nothing there I'm too worried about. Another tree here, say. We can make this one a big thick one by doubling up on the amount of paint. And that's basically the tree trunk. So I haven't gone to a lot of trouble with them. But if you practice them, you'll find it's fun just to put them in wherever you want to and it's no problem. Now for the little tiny round brush. This is for branches. I'll put a few on, then I'll show you how I do it. I'm rolling the brush as I go. Jagged movement, rolling the brush. Now here's the brush stroke. I'll show you over here. You should practice this brush stroke. I've loaded the brush with two colours on it and as I pull it up, I twist it and the colours change. Well, you can do this with your branches. You can load two colours on the brush, one on one side and another colour on the other, and pull it up like that. You're better off painting up and pulling the brush up rather than down. If you pull up, gravity helps pull the paint off the brush. There we are. So you can practice that brush stroke until you can throw them on whenever you want to. Some of the brush strokes aren't going to be so good and others are. What we do, we pick out the good ones, and the ones that aren't so good, we cover them up with foliage. So each time you put these little branches on, it's an idea to put more than what you need, so you can cross out the ones that you don't like. I'll finish off over here a bit now. So those trees don't look very well at the moment, but when we put foliage on, we can cross out all the bits we don't like. Put some more paint up there again. A 
finish this tree off over here now. And a few branches on the ground. Again, rolling the brushes and this jagged movement. The Australian gum trees seem to have a, a jagged change of direction with their branches. They're not a curvy tree, they're more of a jagged branch effect. I want to put them branches in the background trees now. You put these little branches in the dark part of the tree. Not a lot of them, just enough to let you know that, that is trees back there. That'll do there. Now we've got to tidy the grass up around the stump of these trees. Cover up the pieces of twigs that aren't done very well. That's a little fan brush grass brush stroke again. Very handy for covering up mistakes. Now for the foliage in the top of the tree. I need some clean paint here now. With this big brush, this is a dab dab brush stroke again, like we've been using for foliage. You pick up the burnt umber on one side and the white on the other side. And that gives you a chisel point brush. This brush is only a new brush, but it's getting into a good shape. A clean brush just being cleaned in turps is not as good as a brush that's been worked for a little while. This brush is a little bit spongy because it's got paint in it and it's quite good now. So we've got the white on one side and the burnt umber on the other. Again, we're going to use a dab dab brush stroke, but we're going to put two colours on at once up here on the sky. Covering up the bits of branches that are not too good, but at the same time keeping our arrangement so it's interesting. So you try as much as possible to keep everything sloping into the picture rather than out of the picture. So we'll bring these pieces of foliage into the picture. And again on the other side, bring it into the picture. And that's not a hard brush stroke to learn, it's a very handy brush stroke. Just dark on one side, light on the other, and just unload your brush by dabbing it almost perpendicularly onto the wet paint. We're painting wet on wet, which is different than most traditional styles of oil painting. We finish the painting in one sitting. The sky is still wet, everything is still wet. But if you follow the instructions, like I tell you, to keep the sky thin and come forward as I've shown you, you won't have problems with the paint getting all mixed together or becoming muddy. Try and put the paint on one dab of the brush without having to go over. If you fiddle, fiddle, fiddle with your painting, you find that not only do you waste time, but the paint goes all muddy and it's a waste of time anyway because it looks much nicer when it's a rustic effect. Well, that's our first one. Then we'll go on with one very similar, but it'll have water in. I'll show you how to sign it now. The best way to sign it is to just scratch your name in the paint with the end of the brush. That's a simple exercise there. You may wish to do it bigger or smaller. I would say you should work on this type of canvas all the time. I'm using artboards here just for convenience. But it's much easier to work on canvas and have your palette beside you all the time. 